All right, what's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to My Fierce Wings Radio, FaceTime with the Stars. And right now, we got my bro, R&B recording artist Sebastian Michael with us. What's going on? What up, bro? Not much. How are you? Man, I'm blessed. I'm chilling in Paris, enjoying my night over here, because, you know, it's going to be six hours ahead, so we got some cloud in right. the Wow. That's dope. Well, you know, thank you for uh, joining us and being one of our first guests on the uh, new segment. No doubt. So, I mean, the last time we talked, um, it was on the air. We were talking about um, the album Speechless. And since yeah. then, you've done a lot of performances. Um, yeah. Essence. Let's take it mm-hmm. back to Essence when I saw you perform and that whole experience for you. Man, um... Uh... I remember that being like one of the biggest events that was booked for me that year. And like for for like six months, I was looking forward to that performance. So when it finally happened, I had a lot of expectations. I wanted it to be like my best performance so far. Um, I don't know if it was my best performance so far, but it was definitely like crazy. It was It was awesome seeing so many people that came out to support. Just being in New Orleans in general, like mad people came up to me, you know, showed me love. It was it was a fun time, man. Like we, we had a blast. And um for the first time I actually did pretty much my whole album. Like my whole my, my whole set was like we threw in a lot of songs that I hadn't performed before from the album. So it was it was definitely exciting and nerve wracking at the same time. But it was dope. That's what's up. Now, recently, you went on tour. I was there for that whole experience. Gotta say, yeah. if you guys missed it, I don't know what yeah. y'all were thinking about because you tore it down. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. I had to. I had no choice. I'm like, yo, if this is my first headlining tour, I gotta, you know, I gotta give some extra. Like, I got, I just gotta go in. And we had so much fun on that tour, man. It was just, I, I wish I could just do it all over again for real. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. Let's talk about the New York show because that definitely, um, you would say that was the most turned up show. I would definitely say that was the most turned up show. Yeah. How, how was that whole experience with that show and everything? Man, it was, I'm happy that New York was the most turned up show because I live in New York. Um, it was one of the first places that, you know, supported my single, my first single that came out. So it's, and, and I wanted to expect that from New York, and they gave me more than I expected. So I was, I was thrilled. I was really happy. I, you know, I, I remember actually performing. I never performed before from the album actually. Um, Crash it was Crash, and I remember forgetting mm-hmm. the lyrics to that song, and the whole front row knew the song, and just they, they basically saved my, my, you know. Where I, where I effed up, you know what I'm saying? Like they saved the whole song for me, so they kept singing in the lyrics, which made me look good. It didn't look like I effed up. It looked like I was just chilling, vibing and shit. And it was cool. It was a lot of fun. And um, I mean, every single date on that tour was was special. I got to meet a lot of people, a lot of fans that I that I'm happy that I met. Mm-hmm. You know how you on on your socials and you see how people like. There'll be certain people that you see writing to you a lot and I'll be talking to you a lot and you get to meet them in person. And it's it's a good feeling, man. It's, it's, it's really dope for me. I know that's got to be um definitely dope because I even, yeah. a lot of the fans that um, came out and said they were coming, they actually showed their face. I was like, whoa. I was like, I was almost, I was kind of excited to meet them because like, they write you so much. Yeah, it, it, was, it was so much love. Man. It was amazing. Like it was dope. Definitely. And you mentioned the fact of um forgetting the lyrics in that front row singing the words. I was <laughs> I was yeah. watching. I, I barely even noticed, but I had no, you were like you had nodded your head and and they were just getting it. And I was like, yes, <laughs> they are some true fans. How does it feel Yo, true fans for real? True fans that generally love, you know, your artistry. Yo, it just warms my heart for real. Like seeing how they did that, and, and that's that's really how you can see how um how you what type of fans you got, you know? Because obviously, when you have a big game, people people's interest, 
you're gonna you know people are gonna know the song and they're gonna like you but what makes you fan is 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 somebody buying into your whole lifestyle your whole artistry like all your music you know so it meant so much to me that they were singing all the lyrics that's why i just stopped and i just i was like yo i'm I'm like stunned right now this is awesome definitely. it was it was crazy definitely was a crazy experience the way yeah you got a lot sure. of um music playing on love and hip-hop this season uh first episode we heard beautiful life how does that uh make you feel that you know with the every time the show comes on, people are noticing you and you got new fans. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's dope. You know, it's it's like I remember when Forever played on on Love and Hip Hop, and you know, yo, crazy that my record is playing on Love and Hip Hop during like one probably one of the the most viewed like scenes uh love and hip hop you know when joe proposed to, to thierry and uh see yeah we all know about that. <laughs> even in paris they know about that scene so everybody it was one of those like most viewed like everybody was waiting for that moment so and, and the fact that my song was playing during that was was crazy to me and and i remember um one of my friends hit me up and while you know um she was working out or whatever, and Love and Hip Hop came on, and Beautiful Life started playing. And I'm like, and, and I remember she hit me up. She's like, yo, your song is playing on Love and Hip Hop. I was like, yeah, I remember, you know, Forever, whatever, it was playing there last year. She was like, nah, they playing Beautiful Life on Love and Hip Hop. I was like, <laughs> when did that happen? So, you know, just not even knowing that they had that song, it was it was crazy to me that they that they played that as well. Yeah, I it was, was cool. I was shocked. I was actually kind of yeah, because I was like, wait a minute. I know that. Yeah. Voice. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I know that voice. Yo. Like, oh, who it is. Right, right. Yo, it's so crazy. I mean, just just to give you, like, a little story behind it. And and this is something that I, that I like talking about only because it's not, it's not just me. Like, this is so many artists' lives. And you write you write songs in, in you know, in your, in your college dorm or in your, you know, small apartment, wherever you're at. And you just make a song, and you have you you don't you think this song is probably just gonna reach a few of your friends, and and seeing how it goes all the way to love and hip hop, being on TV, mm. being on my album, being a song that like like a lot of people started covering, and and you know became something that like really kind of opened up a door for me. Like those are those are like things that really motivate me musically. Because it just shows me that, you know, when we when we are blessed with a gift, man, we can we're supposed to create art for for people to for people to have and relate to and live with, and and when it's honest, it always cuts through, and it's so crazy, it's so incredible to see. Like when shit is honest and real, it always cuts through, and and people live with it for a long. I wrote that song in 2011, and it's still being played today. So. Yeah, it's it's a special song for me for real. That's dope. And what? Yeah. Let's talk about honesty because I feel like the state of music, especially with R and B, is not enough honesty. How do you how do you remain to stay honest and vulnerable with your uh, music? Um, I always make sure that I always make sure that it's personal for me. Um. Yes, I feel, I personally feel like I can't even really be inspired and write something if it's not honest and personal, you know? Mm-hmm. Because every time I say something, every time I write something, I don't think about oh this 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 sounds dope. Oh, when they hear this, they don't think it sounds ill. I'm saying something ill, whatever. I think about like damn, when I say this, somebody gonna hear this, and I know they're gonna relate to it because I know this it was real. Like I know this was personal, so. That's what I'm striving for when I when I write lyrics, when I write songs. Like I always want to put in real experiences, real stuff, and to the point where I'm like, dang, like listening to this, I'm like, yo, this is real, like this is honest. Mm-hmm. And you know when you've done something that's that's real, and you know when you've done something. I don't want to say real, but you know when you've written something that's that's personal and that's honest. Oh yeah. And you know when you put in just whatever in the record to make it sound hot. So yeah, that's that's how I get inspired. I just be like. When I put this out, I know people are gonna to relate to this. I know people are gonna like connect with this. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's that's really what inspires me. So it's not hard for me doing that. I think the hardest part comes to when you got to convince other people around you that this is the, the right thing to to put out and this is the right thing to push, you know, because not everybody can see your vision or whatever. And, and sometimes it takes some, sometimes you got to first put it out and let people see what effect it has, right. you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the only way for me at this point. I know that's right. Yeah. With me, you know, being an artist and writing music as well, I know that people only want what's honest. They don't want, yeah. they, they may want to turn up and shit, and I might want to turn up and write that too. But yeah. I realize that when you're true with yourself and you're yeah. true to those who are paying attention to what you're doing, people yeah. can respect you more as a person. Yeah. Real shit. Yeah, that's true. No, it's, it's, a, it's a definite. You know, it's like, it's so obvious. I even, you know, for the rest of my team, you know, I feel like, I'm like, yo, look at what Beautiful Life did. Like, look at the impact that I record. I should be, you know, proving to you that, um, that that's, that's the best move. Like, if you can do that, you should always hone in on that and always go with that. Same thing with Made For Me. That's, that's the song that I didn't care about what I was saying. I was, I was talking about you know, something that I think everybody wants. You know what I'm saying? Real love and loyalty and somebody that I can really, like, really stick by you. And, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, like I said, it's the only way to do it, you know? It's the only way to do it. So now, let's talk about um what you got going on in Paris because we see on Instagram. I mean, I, I know what's going on, but I don't know if everybody in the world knows what you're working on right now, project-wise. Yeah, um, right now I'm in Paris. I'm working with a group called Flying Overseas, uh, two producers out here in Paris that um, they really, you know, they're really talented. And we've actually been in contact for, for a while and we're working for the first time now. And it's it's really cool because they bring in something different to, you know, like I was just saying, we made a song the other day where they, they had actually sampled Ethiopian drums, knowing that my mom was Ethiopian right. and, and, but they flipped it. So it was just, it was just dope. It was just popping. Like I heard it and I just thought it was ill. And then he explained what it was. And I just like, I'm like, like, when do you get to work with people like that? I like really, they like, that's, that's how producers should be. Like they, mm -hmm. they found out about you first. They learned about you and then they catered to, what your sound and what your, you know, style is, but then they get, they add something that I, that they have seen you not add before, like that they know the, and they take right. something and they give something new to elevate. So and that's the most important thing. Like that's, that's dope to me. So, um, I was tweeting the other day. I was like, yo, I feel like I'm making like probably the best music I made here in Paris right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm glad, I'm glad I could happen in Paris. Paris. Like it couldn't have been happening in a better place, because you know, in general, like this is like to me one of my favorite cities. So definitely, yeah. and the music sounds hot too. And I mean, just yeah. like the snippets on Instagram and hearing, you know, what I heard in the background before we got started, I was just nodding my head like, word. "Yo, word, word." I was hoping you he was hearing it because I know he was playing. And I was like. I'm like, hopefully you can hear it through the phone right now. Cause... Yeah, I was like, man, Good. we got something for next year for real. <laughs> yeah, man, thank you. Dope shit. So now, um, you also, in fact, no, nah. yeah, 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 yeah. Let me ask you. You shot a video for a record called Mine. Can you uh, yeah. tell us about the record Mine? Because I know a lot of people are asking about it. You know, on Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Mine is, it's a song that um. I, I made it's a, it's a batch of songs that I made um, with two Swedish producers that came over, and um, we basically so we basically got together and knocked out a bunch of records. And out of those records, mine was like my favorite, personal favorite, and it happened to be a lot of people's favorite. And the song is um, sonically is it's a little different, but something I think everybody would will appreciate from me because it's natural to me, but I kind of, 
I kind of just experimented more, kind of just let myself go more as far as the way I was singing, the way it sounds style wise. It's it's a different sound of record. I don't think it sounds like anything else. Mm-hmm. And um, the song is basically about man just meeting a new girl. That that first buzz, like that first feeling you get when you when you start dating someone that you that you're into. Basically, when you get the one that that you've been trying to get and you know out of your league, and when you finally get that one, and you just amp. And you just enjoying your time and just vibing, and that song it's just a vibey song, and um I think yeah I think everybody gonna really appreciate it. It's a really cool song, and we shot the video in LA. Um, one of my homegirls, Gia, uh, she she was nice enough to, you know, be in the video with me. She killed it, and um yeah, it's guys a totally different visual. Very um, I would say artistic with the colors and with the way it's filmed, what we bring out of it. But it's bringing out the right mm-hmm. feeling out of the record, which I'm happy about because I had full creative control out of this video. I actually wrote the treatment for it, so I had full creative, like input and control, and the people just really took it to, you know, and brought it to the next level for me. So I'm very about that joint. Nice. And let me ask you about, um, is it difficult writing a treatment? Because I've been talking to a lot of different R&B artists, and it seems like everybody is writing treatments for their videos now. Yeah, I think it comes with, I mean, I don't know about other writers. I know some other people that I that I work with, they say the same thing. But I know definitely for me, when I write a song, I always see um, just not full visuals but like just um a concept a vibe like a you know an idea like you you see basically <clears throat> what type of environment that the song creates like you hear a song and you can picture something you picture colors that's one thing i always see i always see different colors when it comes to visuals when i like you know the the color scheme of the video, the way it looks, the ways, you know. So that's that's something I always feel and see when I when I write songs. So I always try to like always remember. Sometimes I write down ideas on my phone when I when I make a song, the ideas that I get for a song, and I write it down, and then I go back to it and see, you know, if it still if it still feels the same way for me. And yeah, same with mine. I saw something, I saw like an idea and visual, like I saw the way I wanted it to be filmed when I made a record and that's the way we did it. So that's why it's important for me to have an input, especially now with these songs. Um, you know, I'm, my plan is to make a visual for every song that I put out on my new project. So I think that, um, I think people deserve to have, you know, to get the whole experience, not just the MP3. I think you should put out the whole, the whole thing you know what i'm saying the whole spill of the of the experience or whatever that you did and in that way it becomes more of yeah like i said an experience like it's like a it's like a piece of art that you put out you know what i'm saying quality so that's what i'm focusing on yeah and i feel like it is too because you see a lot of artists i mean we've just seen nikki do it beyonce did it last year i mean yeah and there's so many art, I mean, just artists in general that do it. And I feel like with your music, um, Speechless, um, and what you've got to come, what I've heard, I feel like that's that's going to make, not saying you're not winning, we not winning, but it's going to make you win even more because people are going to be like, yo, I can see what he's saying in my mind. Yeah. Where can I see it visually? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's dope that you're even thinking about doing that. Cause a lot of artists yeah. know what fuck it. I would just put the EP album out and say you if it catches it catches it don't it don't. Yeah, yeah. Sell it. <laughs> nah, that's that's that. I feel like that's not really standing by your work if you do that. That's kind of like saying I'm not 100 percent sure with this, but let's put it out and see what it does. Mm-hmm. Like I never, I I want to have the the highest expectations of my music when I put it out, and I want to. I want to put out quality always and I've definitely put out just before and, and I've seen what it does. And I just said, I just know, I just know that I'd rather 
give my fans the whole it's like more of me, you know what I'm saying? When they hear the song, and especially if it's a personal song, if I have a visual that I've thought through for the visual, I mean, for the song, I want them to get that whole experience. You know what I'm saying? I want them to really understand and 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 really feel the song, you know what I'm saying? To see what I meant and what, what, what where it came from, you know what I mean? So it's so important to me. Right. And I'm glad that a lot of artists are doing that right now. I think that that's where we're going musically. I think people people are less and less going to put out just MP3s and just songs. You know what I'm saying? I think that more people are going to give out, you know, a visual with the song and the whole thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, here's another question for you. I'm going to compare two words as far as music is concerned. Stop <coughs> universally as far as music is concerned. Which way do you feel like artists should always go with or is a better route, route to, go. to go i think that um mm -hmm. i think when you when you focus on just giving out like you're not like oh i'm an r&b artist and i'm a, or, or i'm a pop artist or rock artist whatever the case be like i don't think you should box yourself in i think that you should take advantage of you know the unique 